Welcome to the Live Streaming Musician, brought to you by LottaHype.com. This channel was created to help you overcome the obstacles you'll face on your journey as a live streaming musician. My name is Tim Mahalik, and today we're going to go over part two of how to stream yourself playing the acoustic drum set live on stream. So check it out. All right, before we get into the video, there is a link to download the Live Streaming Musician Blueprint, which has gear lists, common pitfalls, all sorts of tips and tricks. Just click the link below the video and download that blueprint so you have everything you need to get started streaming. All right, let's get into the video. All right, go download that blueprint. There's a bunch of awesome tips and cool stuff in there that I put in there, so do yourself a favor. Go download that blueprint link below. We're going to go over how I have my room set up at the moment as far as the gear, and then we'll go over the OBS settings in my other room. I have a two-room setup, which is probably not... One, it's not recommended by any stretch. Trust me, the amount of technical issues that I have to deal with on a daily basis or just in any kind of a setup change basis is astronomical. So you don't want to have to deal with what I'm doing. So if you can have your main streaming computer in the room where your drum set actually is, that is totally the way to go. So I'm going to kind of go over how you would do that, and then we'll also kind of talk about what I'm doing, which is I have a drum room, which you can see in this picture right here. And I have a studio room, which is a completely separate room. So I don't necessarily recommend that you do it the way I'm doing it, but again, I have a very small room that my drum set currently is in, and there are these two rooms side by side. If this wall was knocked down in between these rooms, sweet, that's totally what I would uh, be dealing with is just one room. But unfortunately, I have to deal with two rooms. So probably different than you. All right. So as we went over in the previous video, we went over the gear that you will need, like microphones, a camera, lights, all cool stuff like that. Let's go over this picture of my room. So you can see there's the camera right there. You can see there are lights on the left side. There are also lights on the right side or behind the drum set. So my room is extremely well lit, which is important. One thing a lot of people focus on when they're streaming themselves playing music at first is a really good camera. And honestly, you can get away with an inexpensive camera if you have high quality lighting. Here's a video of me playing the drums in an older streaming setup where I was using a webcam, but I had exceptionally good lighting. So lighting actually makes a bigger difference for the money than a better camera. So if you can afford a couple hundred dollars in lights, it's actually better than purchasing a really expensive camera right off the bat. So just know that if you only have a couple hundred bucks to spend, I would go heavy on the lights, and get yourself like the C930 that I mentioned in the previous video. All right, so I have microphones on the kit, obviously. There's mics here. As you can see from the picture, there are overhead microphones, which are up here. And then if we go back to the picture, you can see my mixer is on the floor, and all my cables are very neatly routed to that mixer. Very important. So... Making sure that your cable management is in order is probably the first thing that I would do as far as once you set up the mics on your kit. Now, I'm not going to show you how to mic a drum set. If you only have two overhead mics, you can just Google how to mic a drum set with two overhead mics, or if you have five mics or three mics. There are a lot of different techniques depending on the number of microphones that you have. A really popular setup that a lot of studios use actually is two overhead mics, a mic on the snare, and a mic on the bass drum. So that's four microphones. Um, but one thing that you need to take into account because you're live streaming is you are going to have a vocal mic. And this microphone needs to be loud enough so that people inside of your stream can hear you talking either while playing the drums or it needs to be at least as loud as the drums when you are not playing the drums. Which means this microphone is actually going to be picking up more than almost every other microphone in this room. Now, I have 
seven microphones on my drum set, two overheads, the toms are mic'd, the snare is mic'd, the hi-hat down here is mic'd, and my bass drum is mic'd. So there's seven drums, uh, drum microphones, and there's a vocal microphone. But what's crazy is this is actually the loudest microphone in this room. And to prove that, I'm going to show you something. So check this out. So I'm going to go through on my phone because I'm using an XR18 mixer, which I showed you in the previous video. I can actually mute certain channels from the interface on my phone, which is really nice. I can do it on any computer as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to mute every single mic except this mic. And then I'm going to play the drums. And we're going to hear what that sounds like. All right, so the only microphone that's not muted is this one. Let's go ahead and play the drums for a second, and we're going to hear what that sounds like. All right, that's just the vocal mic. Now I'm going to start adding in microphones. So let's just do the overheads, right? So we're just going to add in the overheads real quick. Let's go ahead and play for about 10 seconds. All right, now I'm gonna add in the rest of the microphones so you can hear what's going on. So now you hear what my drum kit sounds like with all of the microphones, including this one. Now you're going to understand why I say this is actually going to be one of the loudest, if not the loudest microphone on your drum kit is because you need to be able to hear this. Now I'm going to start talking while I'm playing the drums and then you can hear what that sounds like. And I actually have my vocal mic not as loud as I would like it in the overall mix when I'm playing the drums on stream but that's because I don't think this microphone when turned up any louder would make the drum kit sound very good and it's not really going to help me overcome my voice not being loud enough. Ultimately the kit and my voice are both going to be getting louder. So I'm kind of battling that. Eventually I will add probably some kind of a uh, microphone that I mount around my ear that comes down here like a headset style mic specifically for a drum style vocalist which they make a bunch of. I can put some links below. You can check those out. And then I will mix that in with the kit. And it does a really good job at removing a lot of the kit sound. It's a super cardioid mic, so the mic pattern points right at your mouth, and it blocks all of the sound coming from this direction. There's actually a video that I'll link below where somebody goes over a lot of the different microphones for singing drummers and how well they block out the drum kit. So you can check that out. All right, so now I'm going to talk while I'm playing the drums. Let's check this out. Yo! I'm just checking the mic. You can hear me right now. It's not a very good sound. It's a little bit muffled. And then on top of that, I'm speaking very loud. So I'm talking at a very loud volume, but you're not hearing it very loud inside of the stream. So that's something that you got to take into account. Now what I usually do is I'll kind of stop playing for a sec, be like, hey man, thanks for stopping by the stream. I really appreciate that. But one thing you got to be aware of is you are going to have music playing while you're streaming. And so you'll also not just be talking over your drum set, but you'll be talking over the music that's playing inside of your stream. And I have a mute button set up on my keyboard so that I can mute that, stop playing for a sec, say, hey, thanks for stopping by, or thanks for following the stream, or thanks for donating to the stream and then hit the unmute button real quick and then keep playing again. I'm not saying this is the best method. I'm just saying this is my current setup. I'm always working on improving, and as I come up with a better way, you guys are going to be the first to know. All right, let's go back over the room very quickly so we understand kind of how I have it set up. So there's mics on the kit. All of those are routed, as you can see in the, in the picture, very cleanly to the mixer, and then from the mixer... That goes in a USB cable because it's a mixer interface all the way to my computer. And so cables go from the microphones into the mixer interface, USB cable into my computer. There's a camera. Now I'm using a DSLR camera, which goes HDMI into a capture card, which I linked in the previous video. I'll link below as well. 
So you can see my setup for that. You can use a webcam, that doesn't really matter. And you can see the angle in the picture of how my camera is set up. Now a lot of streaming drummers like to have their camera in front of the drum set because essentially I end up having to turn sideways to look at my chat or to look at the camera, whereas a lot of other streamers like being able to look forward. This is all personal preference, but the way that I have it is the way that you can see it there. This obviously lights in the room. You're going to need to light your drum set as efficiently as you possibly can with the lighting that you have. And again, like I said, I would recommend putting more money into lights initially than I would into a camera. I would get a webcam like a C930, get some decent lights, and then you can always upgrade the camera later. I have a vocal mic which goes into the mixer interface and then into the computer, and that's about it. A couple things I recommend, making sure you keep your room very tidy. As you can see from my room, it's extremely tidy, or at least as tidy as I can get it. I have a fan behind me. Now, I recommend getting a large bladed fan, so like a 20-inch fan or an 18-inch fan that you can put on a low setting because if you have a fan with small fan blades, it's going to be very loud and high-pitched. But if you have a box fan, like I do, and you put it on a low setting, the microphone still picks it up, but it's very, very soft and quiet and kind of in the background. It's not distracting. So you're probably going to want a fan because you're going to be sitting still for hours. I recommend keeping like a box or something to keep your broken drumsticks in or a trash can, something. And then making sure your room is very neat and all of the cables are tied together. Extremely important. You don't want to be stepping on cables because the more you step on cables, the more likely a cable is to become damaged. Once a cable is damaged, you then need to replace that cable, which just one, adds to the cost of your streaming setup. But two, you might end up not knowing that your cable is damaged and you might stream for a while. And there could be poor quality audio coming through to the people that are watching your stream, which might turn people off to your stream. And some people might not even say anything to you. They might just leave your stream and never come back. So it's always best to make sure that your gear is in as working order as, as possible, doing a test every week or so just to make sure all the cables work, all the microphones work, all that good stuff. But again, keeping everything nice and clean will reduce the chance that you will damage some of your gear. All right, let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how to set up your camera, your interface and microphones into OBS, make a scene so that you can go ahead and begin streaming yourself playing an acoustic drum set. All right, so now we're over on the computer. Let's go ahead and set up an acoustic drum set scene in OBS. Super easy, so check this out. So I have created a blank scene down here. So you can see blank. You can just do this by hitting the plus button here. We're gonna call this drums. Click OK, cool. So now in the sources window here, we're gonna click plus and we're gonna go ahead and add a video capture device. Now I have two cameras in the other room like I was telling you about a foot camera and a DSLR camera that's going through a capture card. So let's go ahead and add the DSLR through the capture card first. So I'm going to do a video capture device. Now you can see I have add existing. Now for me, I already have the AVIO set up, but let's just go ahead and pretend like I didn't. Let's add a new capture card and we're just going to call this drum main cam. Okay. So drum main cam and click OK. Now I can go ahead and from the device list, select the capture card. Now, if I was using a webcam or something else, it would show up here, right? So obviously I have two C920s and a C930. So let's go ahead and select the main camera for the drum room. Boom. Now you can see it's not filling up the whole screen. And I actually have a 1080p webcam in the other room. And inside of OBS, inside the settings inside OBS, you can see here under video, I have the base canvas resolution set up to 1920 by 1080, the output scaled resolution. So this is the base canvas, which is what's inside of OBS. This is what's actually pushed to Twitch. So you could downscale it here and make it 720p or whatever you wanted to do. I have 1080 and 1080, depending on how fast your computer is and how high quality the cameras that you're using are, you may want to use 1280 by um, 720 
as the canvas and the output scaled resolution or 1080 depending on your cameras. I have 1080 and 1080 and the common FPS values here. You're going to get this based on which, um, what FPS your camera is capable of shooting at. So my camera can shoot at 60 frames per second. So I'm going to make my output resolution at 1080 because the camera is 1080 and the FPS value is 60 because my camera can shoot at 60. If you're using a webcam, you're most likely going to put 30 here. So just be aware of that. So these need to be checked. All right, so I don't need to mess with that. So now going back to my drum main cam, I'm going to right click on this and go to properties. Um, let's go ahead and discard these changes. Cool. So it says use a preset here and there's likely not a preset for 1080p. So what I need to do is uncheck the use preset box, go to resolution and click 1920 by 1080. It's still not going to show up until I select a simple FPS value. And in this case, I'm going to use 60 frames per second because my camera shoots at 60 frames per second. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I can rescale this by clicking this bottom area down here and rescaling it to the size of the window. And as you can see, it looks clear and crisp because this is an actual 1080p camera. So I have the drum main cam, which is awesome. Now for me, I'm going to add the foot camera. So I go to video capture device. I'll type in drum foot camera and I'll click OK. Now I will select the second camera, which is one of these, and I'm not sure which one because I have two C920s plugged in, so let's pick one. Oh, that happened to be the right one, which is great. Now what I recommend if you're using a foot camera on, an, on a drum streaming setup or a second camera in any kind of music streaming setup, and it's going to be smaller than the actual resolution that the camera would normally take up. So you can see this is 1280 by 720 right now is the resolution of this foot cam. And you see how large it is. This means that this is actually 1280 by 720 pixels on the screen. I'm not going to have my foot camera that big. So to use less computing power, I'll actually downgrade the quality of the camera to about the size of the foot camera that I'm actually going to use. Now I'm not requiring more CPU power than I would actually need. Um, so let's go back to that, uh, this here. So 640 by 480. Seems good. This is about the size I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it a little bit smaller. So I do want it to be, I don't want to make a smaller resolution and then upsize it, right? And then make this small picture bigger. I want to take a slightly larger image and downsize it slightly. That way it is higher quality than the resolution I'm displaying it at. So let me go ahead and click OK. Now for me, I put my foot camera up in the top left corner at the moment. I might change that over time. And again, you can just drag this little corner, kind of resize it to whatever looks good. That's That seems pretty good right there. OK, cool. So now I have my foot camera in here. I have my main camera right here. Now we need to add the audio to our drum stream setup. So let's go ahead and click the plus icon again. And then we need to get an audio input capture device because we have an audio interface that is plugged into the streaming computer here and all the mics that are plugged into that or if we plugged all of our drum mics into a mixer and then took the stereo out of that mixer and then plugged those two cables into an audio interface that audio interface is an input capture device so we need to capture whether it's a mixer interface like I use the XR18 or whether you're using a mixer that's plugged into an interface. Either way, it's going to be an audio input capture device. So let's go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and do drum. Um, to be honest, it'll just be audio interface, right? Go ahead and click OK here. And now from the device list, I need to select my audio interface. Now webcams will show up as audio interfaces. I have a whole bunch of audio interfaces plugged into this computer right now. I have obviously a lot, but I know that it is the X18 XR18 interface. Um, you can see actually it's already picking up something. So the XR18 XR18 interface is the one I want. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now you can't hear anything that's in the drum room. Obviously I'm not playing drums, but if I were to go in there and play drums, these audio levels would move. So let me go ahead and click OK. And that's pretty much it. If you want to add something like an overlay, you can always add 
all cool, cool kinds of stuff like that. You can add all of your, your chat, your chat on your chat window here. You can do alerts and we'll have a lot more videos about that, but this is a very basic streaming setup as far as getting your audio interface, your cameras, and your other stuff up. Once you get other things going, you'll, you'll obviously want to add and kind of spice your stream up. And like I said, we'll go over that in some other videos. And there's a lot of videos online about adding alerts and overlays to your Twitch setup. So definitely just kind of scope out YouTube, see what you can find about that. This is just kind of a basic overview. One final point that I want to make here is you need to know which encoding settings to use when you're streaming yourself playing drums. So if I go to the settings down here in the bottom right, and I click on this, this output tab is really important. So in here, there's output mode advanced, there's simple, and there's even inside tools, there's an auto configuration wizard that's currently um, grayed out right now because I'm inside the settings menu. But if I wasn't in the settings menu, I could click on this auto configuration wizard and it would try to figure out the best settings for me. Now I'm using a really, really high-end Intel i9 processor. So I use the medium CPU usage preset if I'm using advanced versus simple. So simple is just kind of going to give you the most basic stuff and try to figure it out for you, which for most people, simple will work really well. If you're doing 60 FPS like I am, you have a DSLR camera, you're, you're kind of running a higher end setup, you're going to want to go to the advanced tab and really try to dial in this, right? Like, so I use bit rate 7,000, my key inter my keyframe intervals too, which is really important if you're recording video. That's something that I learned. Medium is obviously about halfway down. Placebo, my computer can't do placebo. My, my computer, honestly, almost gets crumbled under most of these. Slow to placebo. And I have an extremely fast computer. So I run medium pretty well. If I were you and you didn't have an extremely fast computer, I would start by trying fast, faster, very fast, or super fast. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you're running an encoding preset that is too slow for your computer and you need to bump it up to a faster encoding preset. So watch what happens if I go to placebo and I click OK and I just start recording. We're going to get an error message at the bottom left here. So pretty much immediately, encoding overloaded, consider turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset. If you see this message, then you need to uh, speed up your encoding settings. So you need to go from a slower speed to a faster encoding speed. What's interesting is I'm not dropping any frames right now, but normally you will be dropping frames. Another thing to, to remember is do not stream from Wi-Fi. Plug your computer into a hardline internet connection. I know that might not be very convenient for everybody, but running an ethernet cable to your computer is the most consistent, the, is, is the best way to get a consistent stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop recording. I'm gonna go back to the settings here once it's done uh, stopping, because that was very crippling for my computer. Then we're going to go to settings, I'm going to go to output, and we're going to change this back to medium because that's what I stream at. All right, guys, so in the next video, we're going to go over how to set up the back end settings for your Twitch channel, how to set up some of the stream elements settings, which is a platform I use for my bots and for alerts and for donations. That's going to be in the next video, so go ahead and click that. That's in the link in the description below. Also, make sure to get that live streaming musician blueprint which is also in the link in the description below. Again, this is the live streaming musician brought to you by a lot of hype.com. My name is Tim Hollick. I'll see you on the internet. Thanks so much again for watching the video. If you haven't already, click the link below this video to download the live streaming musician blueprint. This blueprint is jam packed with gear lists and all sorts of stuff that you're going to want to be aware of when you're streaming yourself playing music, common pitfalls, all sorts of stuff like that. So click the link below this video to download the live streaming musician blueprint and happy streaming.